สวัสดีค่ะ Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are live uh, in my office today because it is so beautiful out here in Virginia. A uh, beautiful spring day that I really didn't want to be down in the the basement gym today. So, um, just a quick reminder: if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please subscribe, like, and share the video. And then also as a reminder: the video will be available about 12 hours later for the replay, just to let everyone know. And then, if you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. Uh, the suggested pledge is about five dollars a month, and that gives you access to exclusive content as well as detailed notes from all of my YouTube live classes. And then I am also available for online training, one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. So if that is something that you're interested in, you can write in the comment section um, and all that good stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So today is a big day for me. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, I just went to the doctor today and I got cleared uh, for my knee injury. So I, for those of you who do not know, I hurt my knee back in February in Thailand. I had someone fall on the side of my leg and I ended up having a flap tear of my meniscus as well as a strained MCL. Um, so it was a long recovery, but luckily, I guess it's kind of silver lining of the quarantine is that I have not been able to train at all. So I got cleared to pivot today. So today we are doing kicks and I'm so excited about it because any of my students know uh, we are kicking is my favorite thing, especially kicking hard. So just to show you guys, um, just because I'm so excited about today, we are I'm rocking the old school, uh, my old team shirt. So everyone can just uh, check it out. My only favorite quotes: less talking, more training. So we're gonna get into it, okay? So we're gonna start with stance. Uh, stance is the most difficult thing in Muay Thai, so we want to make sure that we start with that, um, because depending on where we move. So our feet are gonna be underneath us. Okay, we're gonna move one, two, three and a half. My front foot is pointed at the target, the back foot is a 45, and I should be able to slide a dollar bill underneath my heels, elbows in, hands at eyebrow level, and I'm doing this kind of modified cigar thing where I kind of bring the hand inward a little bit. And I should be shifting my weight really light here, just kind of moving. Now for those guys who've kind of, uh, been with me for the last month or so. We've done a lot of different types of footwork, so we're just gonna go ahead and review that, but from more of this more traditional tie stance. So instead of a step and slide, we're gonna do a step and step. One, two, three. Now we're gonna move this way. One, two, three, then the other way. One, two, three, and then back. One, two, Three. So that is our step and step in our plus sign footwork. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then back. One, two, three. Okay? So still keeping that tie rhythm, that one, two, okay? Because every art has its kind of its own rhythm. So it's very important that we know how to maintain that rhythm when we're doing it. So that is our plus sign footwork. Those of you guys who were with me last time when I did uh, elbows, we worked a little bit on that quarter turn or that follow water. So what we're gonna do is we're going to long guard and cop follow water, just to kind of review that. So two, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then long guard. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, Three, one, two, three. Excellent. Okay, so that's our follow water, just to kind of be clear about that. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add something new today. And then the new thing we're going to be adding is the hop kick or the hop to cover distance. Um, I use this a lot to kind of set up different types of kicks because kicking is my absolute favorite thing to do in Muay Thai. I love kicking and I love kicking hard. It's my absolute favorite thing. So what we're going to focus on first is we're going to go ahead and start just the footwork. So I'm going to do all the footwork in isolation, then we're going to kind of combine it all. So the two types of footwork we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the rear kick today because this is the kick that I miss the most. It's my best friend. It's my favorite thing that I do. Uh, so for the hop kick, okay, uh, which is very difficult for a lot of people, is the footwork that usually jams everybody up. So we're going to just we're going to pick up this rear foot, and we're just going to pick it up slightly, okay, because this is kind of selling the kick. And then all we're going to do is after we pick it up, 
is we're going to set it down. Okay, kind of hop off of this leg and set it in front of the other one. Now notice I didn't just jump up, I'm jumping forward to cover distance. And I'll even do it on an angle to step off of center line. So here. And then take your time, like really pick it up and then set it in front. Excellent. So that is our hop. Now we're going to do the other side. And you can just go ahead and just switch stances for right now because we haven't gotten into the cut step yet. So bring the leg up. Okay. Now I'm going to set this down as I push off of this leg. You'll notice I'm not really loud. I'm still landing quite soft because the whole goal of this is to either do a feint or cover distance. So that is our hop. Okay. Our next one is going to, we're going to do the V-step. I'm going to explain kind of the context of what we're using the V-step for today. So the V-step today is going to be, we're going to be really focusing if we're going to say do that step into leg kick or we step into it. Okay. So instead of just V-stepping and stepping kind of like inside boxing or Kali, we're going to step to take our head off of center line to kind of counter the hands to land our heavy kick. So we're going to kind of hop into it, if you will. So, but we're right now, we're just going to V-step and V-step. Now, for those guys who maybe are not the best at pivoting, okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and take that V-step and then turn our foot when we step. So I'm turning my foot. So I'll, as much as I can, it's like I'm stepping out. Okay, and that's going to really help you guys if who are not great at pivoting. So there's two types of kicks. You have kicks for speed and kicks for power. So you have pushing force and rotational force. Uh, personally, especially after having lots of knee injuries, I'm a bigger fan of rotational force now, so I don't jack up my knees. So I always like my knees to follow my toes. But a lot of people have a hard time pivoting, so this kind of really helps people. So if you just want to practice stepping out on your V-step a little bit, kind of, you're halfway done with the pivot then. Okay, so V-step, excellent. Now, for the cut step, we speed it up. So the cut step is the kick we use for our lead leg kick. So it's kind of like wedging out, for those of you who remember the wedging out. The difference is I'm not going to go back as far, so it's going to be a little bit more forward. So the idea is, I see a lot of people, when they do like the switch kick or the cut kick, or whatever you want to call it, um, they kind of like, in place, or don't do that. So what we want to do when we're kicking is I'm going to pick up this foot first, like just like in the V-step, and I'm going to replace this foot takes me off center line. And we're doing it quick, quickly on the balls of our feet, almost like a sprinter coming off the blocks. Excellent. Just kind of review the footwork we've done so far. So we've covered our step and step and our plus sign. We've done our quarter turn, fall the water. We've done our hop kick. We've done our V step to step off of center line, transitioning into our cut step. Okay. So these are all the different kind of footwork drills that you can do to kind of really um, help out your kick. And then next time when I do focus on kicks, I'll bring out an agility ladder and show you guys some really great drills to kind of help you kind of clean this up. But the big thing is, is that when you're on your feet, it's about your feet. So a lot of people love hitting stuff and I love hitting stuff too. But especially because right now, there's a lot of, I think, value in focusing on your footwork and making sure your footwork is good first and building that foundation. Because if your feet are wrong, nothing else will feel right in your Muay Thai. And the biggest difference that you ask most Thais when you go to Thailand about what's the difference between Westerners and Thais, it's balance. 
And so it comes down to kick, you're already on one leg. We don't want to compromise our balance anymore. So we want to make sure that we're hitting hard, but we also have the ability to always shield when we're done. Okay, so those are two things that you really need. We need balance, and then we also need a good foundation to have power. So I'm going to give you guys uh, kind of three different ways to shadow box your kick today. They're all really great options. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to develop in your kick. And then I'm going to show you some of the ways I like to use my kicks to set up kind of some fun stuff. So the first thing we're going to be working on today is that we're going to just working on just foot jabbing first. I like to foot jab to kind of really strengthen your hip flexor. So once it strengthens your hip flexor, this is really, really important. Because a lot of people are not strong here. Like picking this up. So a big thing if you're going to practice kicking, a good precursor for kicking is knees. Making sure your knees are very strong to really strengthen your hip flexor. So for our foot jab, we're just going to do basically an in-place kind of foot jab. So we're going to do long range foot jab and then short range. Keeping both hands up, you don't have to lean right now. And what I really try to focus on on my foot jab is I'm thinking about bringing my hip back, and then driving my hip forward. I don't want to snap it out. So it's not a snap kick. I'm driving my hip into my target. That's what we're looking for. So for our foot jab, okay, keeping our balance. And now I'll even pivot a little bit to make sure my, yeah, I'm going to bring my knee up as high as I can, make sure I have good strength here. And then I think about pushing from my hip straight in and then bring it back, okay? So when I push, straight in, bring it back. Notice when I bring it back, I bring it back to my stance. What I don't do is this. Remember, balance, okay, very important. So we have our foot jab, okay? And then our back foot jab. Same thing, bringing it back to our stance, driving from our hip, curling our toes. So imagine like you have high heel shoes on, that's what we're putting into the person. Okay, and I really want you to try to bring your knee up as high as you can first to really strengthen this hip flexor. And try not to compensate by doing, by leaning before you even put the kick. That's your last little push of rotation. So here, push, okay, push. And then if you would like to turn it into more of a workout, you can walk with it. And this is a great way to kind of just like build up your cardio again. So this goes walk, walk, and then balance. And I'm gonna go backwards so everyone can see me. And then what you can do is you can also combine any of the footwork that we already did and turn it into a drill. So say if you wanna add this step and step, and then foot jab, foot jab, Foot jab, foot jab, okay? So any of those, you can do any of the footwork that we've done and combine it with a kick to kind of work on two things at the same time. So we're working on form, balance, and footwork. So all of those are really valuable. So that's our first thing we're gonna be working on is just knocking out those foot jabs. So if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead and knock out your 50 foot jabs. We'll just go ahead and knock those out real quick. You can walk with them or you can do them in place, whatever works best for you. And I will do them with you today, because I'm so excited about kicking. So for those of you who are more advanced, you can add the lean and the long guard if you want. And 50. So 
Now our heart rate should be a little elevated. Hip flexors should be kind of warm. Be a little warm. So the reason why I wanted to do that first is because we're getting in to probably some of my favorite stuff to do. So anyone who's ever sparred me knows I love leg kicks. Love leg kicks. They're my favorite. And I have a very funny story about them, but I won't share it today. But it's pretty awesome. So we're going to take that, that V step that we were working on earlier, and we're going to kind of hop into it. So there's multiple ways to do the kick. You can spin through to shadow box, or you can shadow box without spinning through, or you can just hold. So what we're going to do first is we're going to isolate and just hold to go from kind of that foot jab position to our kick position to really isolate the pivot. We're just going to do like 10 of these on each leg. So our first one is we're going to go ahead, we're going to bring our knee up like we're going to do the foot jab, and what we're going to do is we're going to pivot so now our leg turns sideways. And we're going to try to balance here, making sure you see how my heel is facing towards the camera and then back. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and pivot from here, our foot jab position, to our round kick position, and then back. So the more you can isolate this better. Now I'm doing it on carpet, which is kind of wonky. Um, it's not a great carpet. But if you have mats, it's a little easier or something a little more firm. So up, then we're going to pivot over, and then back. And I'm long guarding, and the reason I'm long guarding keeping my hands in the face is because it helps counterbalance your lean. You can tell I haven't kicked in 10 weeks. Okay, so now our other side, let's see how this knee does. This is the bad knee, guys, so we'll see how it goes. So, now I have not pivoted on this leg in, since the beginning of February, so we'll see how it goes. So, we have our foot jab position, we pivot, and then go back. Okay, foot jab position, pivot, go back. Foot jab position, pivot, go back. Put you out of position, pivot, go back. And you'll notice I'm not even extending this kick on all the way, because what I'm really trying to figure out is the chamber and the pivot. Awesome. So now let me isolate the pivot. Hips are getting warmer. So I have a lot of students who have very tight hip flexors, hips, because most of us sit too much, especially now. So what I love about Muay Thai is it strengthens your whole hip kind of girdle in a large range of motion. So if you really get like really, really strong with this, like nothing burns calories like kicking. Period. So if you really want to get in shape, I would highly recommend just even shadow boxing kicks. Let's do those walking foot jabs or just working on that pivot. Just shadow boxing kicks. It's just gonna like take your heart rate and just put it through the roof. So and it's also just like this feels good. If you have a heavy bag at home, it's even better. So we've done all of our warm-ups. We've done our foot jabs, we've done our pivot. Now we're gonna work on shadow boxing the kick without spinning through. So taking that V-step. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I like to also pivot when I do this. So when I do my hop, I like to pivot with it. So I'm gonna imagine that almost like I'm stepping into a leg kick. So I'm in my stance, when I hop into it, and then I shield out. So the idea is to stop the power of the kick because the beauty of the tie kick is it's like a it's like a baseball bat at the end of a chain. So you don't just swing it, you swing it and it like whips through. So it's like this big motion, it's really awesome. So because of that, it's hard to control. So what I'm gonna do is when I step and I throw my kick, I turn the knee up at the last second to pull it away. This takes the power off. And it's a great trick if you're sparring, if you don't wanna like wreck your partner's legs, because we like our partners. So when I step, kick, whip it up, okay? Step, 
take the power off. So, pop, pop. And then shield out. Not bad for someone who hasn't done it in 12 weeks. And then shield out. Oh, also, I should clarify, you have to yell in Muay Thai. Everyone yells in Thailand. If you don't yell, it doesn't count. What? See, now that now it's a real Thai kick, because I yelled. It was better. Okay, so that is your right kick, or my rear kick, not spinning through. Now we're going to do the, the lead kick, not spinning through. Now you can do this two different ways. We can V-step by stepping forward. So this is more like our lateral triangle that we did. I'm stepping on this V. So this is great if you want to cover distance. So I step on the V and then kick. Okay? That's fine. So step, hop into it, and then kick. Let's just work that one for now. And then bring the knee up to take the power off. So notice I'm still pivoting. So we're combining kind of everything we worked on. So that is our lead kick, don't spin through. So we're going to finish with our spin through kicks. This is actually my favorite way to shadow box a kick. Um, it gets me the most relaxed. And I love to do it for people who have trouble with the pivot, people who have trouble relaxing, people who snap their kicks too much. It's my personal favorite. But it does not translate to fighting. So you should not spin through when you kick when you fight. But as a basically as a training methodology, I think it's very effective. We're going to do this two different ways. So we're going to start. Everything's the same. Um, this is going to be more of our rotational force. So I'm not going to step, try to do this a little more in place. And we're going to really focus on pivoting. So it's going to be heel, hip, shoulder, my leg is last, and then the kick has to be horizontal. Okay? So when I do this, when I pivot, I'm trying to make it either up and down or horizontal. I'm going to make sure I do not kick my own desk. Because anyone who knows anything about me is I'm all legs. So, notice after you do that spin, we're going to pause, I'm going to take a step, and then take a beat to shield, to make sure my balance is correct. Because we don't want to spin all the way through and then be like, Ooh. that's when people hit you back. So, we're going to, so I'm going to pivot, shield. You'll notice I'm not trying to control the leg, so I want to imagine like almost like my leg is dangling from my hip. And I just rotate my body really hard, and then the leg just kind of follows. Remember, it's that baseball bat at the end of the chain. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but now we're going to do a slightly different footwork. So, before we stepped, and kicked. We're going to cut step now. Here. So I'm going to cut step, pivot, and then shield on the way back, two back to our stance. So cut step, pivot, and then shield. Always making sure our balance is correct. Okay. 
And the last one. Excellent. Okay, now it's gonna have some, let's have some fun. So now that we've kind of built our foundation, give you guys some tools to kind of isolate this. Now I'm gonna give you guys some fun ways to use kicks to have fun when you spar, to have fun when you're just putting combinations together. So I had the pleasure of being a seminar with Phil Nurse like a really long time ago. And he says that we'd always stuck with me. And as a striker, you have to be a salesman. You have to sell it. So the idea is I keep doing things until they don't work anymore. And then when they, when they stop working, at the last second, change my mind. And because I've sold the kicks, you know, over and over again, that's what gets the reaction out of your opponent. So what we're going to start with is just how do we utilize that hop kick we were talking about. So that's Spencer's. We're going to use the hop kick. But the way I like to use it is, is I like to kill the leg. I kill the leg. I kill the leg. And I keep killing the leg. Okay? And after I've keep killing the leg for a while, then people start shielding a little early. That's what I want people to do. Okay, if they're shielding early because they're anticipating instead of reacting, that's what sells out the hop kick. So what I'm idea behind it is, I worked on the hop and then I kick. So instead, I will oversell it. So I'll do the hop. I'll really kind of bring this up. And then when I cut, when they shield early, I'll cover the distance and then kick out the, the ankle and the other leg or kick the, like, the other leg in general. So I love this. This is actually one of my favorite things to do. So I, so I kick the leg. I kick the leg. Now I'm going to pick it up like I'm going to sell it. And then kick out the other leg. So kick the leg. Kick the leg. Now we're going to pick it up. They shield early. Kick the other leg. And that's how I like to use the hop kick. It's a personal favorite of mine. It works pretty well for me. Uh, hopefully it'll work well for you. But you have to drill it. So if you're not comfortable with this footwork, it's very difficult to pull it off. Because you're just going to be flat-footed, essentially. So step, kick the leg. Kick the leg. Pick it up. Then kick. Then kick. I'm trying really hard not to kick my own desk. That would be terrible. Okay. So that's the first way I like to use some kicks. My other one that I really enjoy is um, to use the low kick to set up our Superman punch. Uh, when I when I was first started training like 14 years ago, that was like the hot new thing. Everyone did it. Sometimes for no reason at all. And uh, it's very effective. There's lots of ways you can set it up. Okay, so again, I like to set it off of the leg kick. Just keep kicking the leg. Just keep kicking the leg. Then when I see people start to catch it, like I love when people try to catch leg kicks. Okay, because that usually means I think catching kicks is fine. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just that when you're in sparring and someone's not hitting you as hard as they can, it's different. So if I'm if the person is catching a lot of kicks but they're catching early. This is what sets it up, okay? So I kick the leg. I kick the leg. Now, when I see them start to catch, I'm gonna bring this up, and I'm just gonna do is donkey kick this back and shuffle, and kind of hop to finish it. So it's here to here. But it's all predicated on the fact that I sold the leg kick first. If, if the person's not catching that leg kick or not bringing their hands down, it's not saying you can't land it. It's just that it's not going to land as clean. Because the idea is that it's just like I just want to fake the guy out. It's like a sucker. It's like, oh, just kidding. Okay, so that's the goal. So we kick the leg. We kick the leg. Now I'm going to bring it up. And there's my Superman punch. So our first one is you use the leg kick to set up the hop kick, kicking the inside leg. The second one we did is we use the leg kick to start setting up the Superman punch. Now we're going to do some, uh, some things a little more pizzazz. So 
By the same token, you can do the same kind of concept with the foot jab. So you're landing a lot of foot jabs. You're foot jabbing. You're foot jabbing. Now, same thing, person starts to try to catch it. Now, the, I'll give you the simple answer, and then we'll do one fancy one with a flourish for the, you know, for the back row. So, I go foot jab, foot jab, and I see that the person is starting to bring their hands down. So, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just bring my knee up and then just throw the straight cross. I don't even need to shuffle a lot of times, but you can if you like. So, I bring the knee up, foot jab, foot jab. I bring the knee up, there's the cross. Foot jab. Foot jab. I bring the knee up, punch. Foot jab. Foot jab. Bring the knee up, punch. That's the finish. Now, We'll see if I can still do it. So um, this is a story. I was been doing this particular setup since before Muay Thai. When I used to do uh, Taekwondo, I did a uh, Korean karate, which is like a blend of Taekwondo and Tang Sudo. And I used to do this in point sparring all the time. And I remember, I think it was my second Muay Thai class ever. And they made me spar. <laughs> it was a different time. And I remember catching the instructor with it in his in his face, in his eye, and then be like, I'm so sorry, because I'd never hit anyone in the face before. I only hit people with points bar. And he's like, no, I should have kept my hands up. So I've been doing it ever since, and it's been very popular in, in MMA. But uh, but I, this is how I personally set it up. So one of the more popular ways to deal with foot jabs is to kind of scoop. So when I see people start to scooping foot my foot jab, I know it's time to do it. So I'm going to foot jab. My foot jab, person starts to scoop it. That is when I start doing the question mark kick. Now I'm gonna move over a little bit so we do not kick my desk, okay? Because usually this is when I practice the spin through. So the question mark kick is very popular now, but I think if you set it up with someone who catches a lot and scoops, it, it can be a knockout shot versus just like a flourish, something you just throw at someone's head. So my foot jab, foot jab. Now, when I see them turn, I'm gonna bring my knee up as high as I can, and at the last second, I pivot, okay? So everything that we've been working on has kind of culminated with this last combination. So foot jab, foot jab. To finish. So when you're doing that question mark, the more you can bring this knee up as high as you can and then pivot in place, the easier it's going to be for you. It's a little tricky for me because I haven't won, I haven't done it in like 12 weeks. This is actually my, you guys are seeing for me, my first day pivoting for kicks in a very long time. So, especially head kicks. But uh, for me, this is still something that I love to do and it's a great setup for it. So, foot jab, foot jab. Now, the beauty of that is if you take that, you can also do the opposite. So what that means is, so I can throw the kick, I throw the kick, and then switch it, where I throw the kick and switch it to a foot jab. So the inverse is always true. So I just want everyone to like kind of see that, especially as Westerners, we see kind of boxing to set up the hands, especially that Dutch style of, of uh, tie. But I think it's really great to isolate tools. So when you isolate tools, and your tool development, like your stance and motion, your kicks, and just really kind of work on them, it starts to kind of open up like, how can I just use this half of my body to trick someone on the outside? So this is something I've been doing a long time. I've been doing Taekwondo since I was nine. So kicking is like a big thing for me, but my kicking, you know, ideas have definitely changed. Like I used to throw like tons of head kicks. I don't throw quite as many head kicks anymore. I'm not like super old, but not quite as flexible as I used to be. So I think that all this stuff is, is super valuable for people. So what I'm gonna do now is take questions. <laughs> Safety tip. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. I know the desk will definitely win for sure. Okay, so right now, 
now that we've done all these different kicks and kick setups, I wanted to take questions. If there's anyone had any questions about any of the kicks or the kick setups or like how I kind of built that foundation as far as the stance, the pivoting, kind of strengthening the hip flexor and all that good stuff. And I want to say everyone, thank you so much for your patience today because this is my first day kicking in probably 10 to 12 weeks of like really, really kicking. So I really appreciate it. Um, and also if you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please do. That always helps me out a lot. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Are there any questions about anything about kicks, stance, or anything that we did today? If not, I will let you guys go ahead and stretch out. Thank you so much for tuning in live. I really appreciate it. And remember, drillers make killers, guys. Kum kum ka. Yes, Ollie. Yes, you do have very tight hips. <laughs>